started in, in the land industry. Uh, me and my buddy, I remember, sent 2,000 mailers to actually find someone that would sell their land for uh, a deep discount. And so we got those two first parcels for, I think, $6,000 each. And, you know, they were in an HOA. I think HOA was like 500 bucks a year. The, mil the, the, the house right next door with was $600,000. So I was like, man, we're paying 6,000 for that. And people next to it are building like very high end properties. Welcome to another episode of Break Away from the Rat Race. And today I have the pleasure of uh, speaking with uh, uh, Romain Danielou. Did I pronounce that right? Exactly. Pretty good. <laughs> and uh, uh, Romain is, uh, you're going to be very excited. He does land development and land investment. He's the co founder at Land Choir and House Choir. 65 full-time employees uh, and Landquire is an innovative secure partnership website for land investment opportunities he's going to tell us all about that uh, and the members of Landquire our community can discover and share land investment opportunities online and create you know partnership to invest in land development land development and land investment is something very special and i think daniel uh, Romain is gonna actually walk us through all of that and all the the, the special skills that you need and the special ways of investing this then uh Romain, i don't know why i keep saying daniel, yeah. <laughs> daniel Romain, Romain. welcome to the <laughs> welcome to the show <laughs> thank you all right and i also want to introduce my co-host antoine martel my my son and business partner and you know co-host extraordinaire yes so, very good so Romain, so uh, tell us more about about Land Choir, House sure. Choir, how you got started in that, how many members, and all that kind of all sure, that kind sure. Of stuff. Well, thank you for having me today, guys. Appreciate it. Of course, our pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Met Looking your son playing it. soccer, and you know here we are yeah, talking really. about real estate. Yeah. yeah, I mean just to to uh, on a personal level, I, I migrated to the U.S. six years ago. Um, at the time, I was playing soccer. I was trying to make it pro here in the U.S. After not signing in, in France, um, I was in an academy playing semi-professional. Came here, uh, did my degree. At the same time, I did a double degree in uh, international business and computer information system. Um, and out of that that degree in 2019, you know, like any kid, I was trying to stay in the U.S., making sure I can get a visa. And uh, I applied to, I think, 300 companies. And at the time, the COVID 300 hits. 300 companies? Right. Wow. None of them. I thought that applied <laughs> to a lot of companies. <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, but obviously, I didn't have the visa to actually pursue and work for any company. Damn. Besides, I had a, a, a one-year OPT, which is kind of mm -hmm. what they give you uh, once you get your degree as an international yeah. student. Yeah. So I kind of created a company on the side to sponsor myself. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of... I wanted to see what's on the market. What can I do? I, I was an entrepreneur at core. I've, I've tried a bunch of things between e-commerce, cryptocurrencies, and real estate. I think real estate it was always the, the the way to go if you want to build long-term wealth. Um, so yeah, started in in the land industry. Um, me and my buddy, I remember, sent two thousand mailers to actually find someone that would sell their land for uh, a deep discount. And so we got those two first parcels for, I think, $6,000 each. And, you know, they were in an HOA. I think HOA was like 500 bucks a year. The mil the, the, the house right next door with was $600,000. So I was like, man, we're paying 6,000 for that. And people next to it are building like very high-end properties. Mm -hmm. So, it you know, we started marketing the properties. We put it, you know, on the MLS with a, a professional picture and professional drone, uh, you know, tour. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let's just sell it for like 30 or something. And my buddy is like, no, like we're going to market this right and we're going to take our time. So we put it on the market for 145. Uh, both parcels was like all the description of what can you can you do? What what can't you do with the land? Mm -hmm. um, and that's what, you know, the value is created because a lot of people, they, yeah, they don't understand true. land. Mm -hmm. So we did our research, do the marketing and uh, we got an offer at 129. Uh, seller financing. Wow. So since that day, uh, three years ago, the, the, the guy is paying us 600 a month uh, with a 5% interest. And then there, there's a balloon payment after five years that if he doesn't pay, we keep the property. So I was hooked. I was hooked. And uh, wow. from those 2,000 mailers, we started sending more mailers. 
uh, quickly ran out of money. So after three months, I was like, I don't have any any more money to send mailers because mm -hmm. mailers are yeah. 50 cents a pop, right? Well, and you didn't get a big chunk of money from selling exactly. the land as well. Exactly. Exa yeah, damn. So, you know, we got into the, the finance world where, okay, how can I get money to, to create a bigger company? Um, decided to do debt instead of equity because at the time the, the valuation of the company, there yeah. was no valuation. Yeah, exactly. It was just yeah. me and, yeah. and two partners. So we raised $2 million on, on debt, uh, non-secured uh, and non-convertible, non -convertible, meaning, you know, it was just based on trust. Handshake. Handshake, <laughs> love money, however, however you want to yeah. call it, yeah. pre-seed. It's not even a pre-seed. It was not yeah. even equity. Yeah. Uh, so with that $2 million, we built, you know, a team of, I think 30 to 35 people at the time uh, started putting the departments together, started sending a bunch of mailers on a weekly basis. Uh, we got up to a point where it was 100,000 mailers a month. Um, wow. I think right now we're doing between 60 so to 80. So this is going from zero to 100 mile and Right. You know, we, I went all seconds. in. I mean, I was <laughs> no kids, you know, I, I have a girlfriend, but besides that, I was just, you know, I left my sports career and mm -hmm. the only thing I knew in life was to go hard or go home. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. me and two partners went hard at it for, I mean, now it's been, it's our second year of operations, 22nd month. Um, so did the debt, after a year we did a pre-seed uh, that kind of helped us to uh, keep going. Uh, in between we bought, I think 350 parcels. Uh, some of them were rural, some of them were infills, some of them were subdivisions, some of them were commercial with that you know, when title from, you know, a, a typical retail property to, okay, how can we put a, a hotel of a hundred room on it? So we worked ex ex extensively with land planners uh, on ground to help us, you know, maximize the value of each parcel. And that's what we've been, you know, diving into the, 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 the first 18, 18 months really. Um, really making sure we, s we scrape data, we send the mailers, we do the right market research, we centralize everything into a CRM. Uh, currently, we're using HubSpot. I mean, mm -hmm. there's there's hundreds of real estate CRMs, yeah. um, but that's kind of my forte. That's really HubSpot that I decided to go into. Um, we wanna we wanna get our our own CRM one day, but it's just a lot of work, you know, building your own CRM through mm -hmm. Salesforce or yeah. even from scratch. So decided to to stay on HubSpot for now. Mm -hmm. um, and and right now the goal is you know to keep acquiring more land over time. We think land is this very special asset. It's, it has, it's one of the only thing that has a limited supply. I mean, if you look mm -hmm. at gold, diamonds, I mean, we, we talk about limited supply, but not really. I mean, they're yeah. creating new diamonds with um, synthetic, synthetic diamond, diamond yeah. uh, gold. There's, there's new gold being found over time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I kind of compare land as like a, uh, you know, a fine asset, a little bit like Bitcoin, where it's never going to be more than 21 million Bitcoin. It's yeah. a little bit similar with land. Mm -hmm. You can find out online how many parcels there is, how many acres it exists. So I think, you know, we find value in, in making our investors invest in land, making sure they trust the process. We make sure we secure their money first, and then we try to uh, increase their, you know, their net worth through land. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the platform we created over time. Yeah, so that's Landquire, right? So that's, that's the Land platform. Choir, right. So on that platform, you, your, your team and your mailers and stuff like that, you get a whole bunch of uh, opportunities or land that, uh, that you think these are good opportunities, good deals. You put them under contract. Right. And then you put them on Landquire for your community to, to, invest, to in. invest in. Okay. Right. So how many people do you have on, on the community? So over the last... 22 months, we have 160 investors uh, that invested with us. Mm -hmm. uh, the average ticket is around sixty-six thousand dollars. Some of them, some of some of them put twenty-five. And by some ticket, of by ticket, you mean the average, average investment? In, exactly. Oh wow! Correct. Okay. Um, so we we have a, an investor relation department that kind of, you know, build the community, making sure they understand why to invest in the U.S. market mm -hmm. because most of our investors are from. French countries uh, were two French co-founders yeah. and you know, the euro has been going down. Uh, the real estate market in Europe is way different than here. Yeah, the transactions yeah. are longer. Yeah. The taxations are more complicated. 
uh, when they come across the U.S. market and they understand the difference, mm -hmm. usually they they decide to diversify in the U.S. dollar mm -hmm. or the land in, yeah. in the U.S. market. So how many? So you're getting how many deals a month are you getting right now? Or how so many do you have on your platform that's yeah, available for investment? It'll vary, um, but I'll say between 20 to 30 parcels okay. uh, that are rural, residential, infills, you know, typical buy, sell, buy, mm -hmm. sell, without even touching it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get a couple of commercial deals and a couple of subdivision deals. Um, okay. Those are obviously a bigger amount to fund. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just closed on an 80 acre in Oregon uh, two weeks ago. Um, we're closing in another one in a month that is 25 acres and those parcels, you know, are in the million dollar range. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of always for me, making sure the investor relation department has, has enough time to raise the capital, mm -hmm. making sure our investors understand the deal. You know, how long do we need to put into it? How long it's going to take to, um, entitle it to, you know, one dwelling, a an acre to 10 unit, mm -hmm. 10, you know, 10 yeah. units, an acre. So you get a piece of land, and then uh, this. So you have the different types, right? So you have the, you mentioned the infield. Do you want you mind describing the different kind for the uh, for the listeners? Kind of yeah. what are the different well, types out there? What kind of price range we're looking at? And right, right, right. Um, I think eighty percent of what we do is the typical infield. You know, the the lot that was in a subdivision, but for some reason was never built. Mm -hmm. um, most of our deal come from people that you know, owned a lot for, uh, you know, 10 years and they, it got passed down to from, you know, their parents or they were never decided to actually build on it. They're out of state. Um, there's a lot of different reasons why they didn't actually do anything with it. And so we're here to actually provide a solution for them. Obviously a cash offer uh, mm -hmm. and the cash offer comes, you know, in, in, in less than 30 days. So that's kind of how, you know, if you have land and you've got some other projects where mm -hmm. we we come and we actually take it from you uh, against cash. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it needs to meet our financial criteria. We need to make sure that the BPO, CMA or appraisal come back, you know, with, uh, you know, our criteria and then we just close it. Mm -hmm. uh, we make sure that we fund it. Uh, we put enough deposit to make the seller comfortable and we make sure there's a, a smooth transaction mm -hmm. for every seller. And then for the commercial, these are bigger commercial type land. These are mm -hmm. bigger piece of land that are zoned commercial, I'm assuming. And this is to build like either like, uh, you know, a shopping center, apartment building, right. office tower, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the last one we closed down was in um, Arizona. Uh, I think we acquired it between, I think it was 250. We're gonna put another 200 in it to make sure the land planner and lawyers and all that have enough time and 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 resource to actually pitch it to the county. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are doing a parcel that will be entitled for a hundred room hotel mm -hmm. with um, a retail store at the bottom. Um, okay. And so when you get entitled for that, obviously the builder will look at. How much can you pay for the land? And typically, we should be able to do a three to four x on our basis. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so all for all these uh, parcels and these pieces of land, you always do an entitlement. You always try to find the best use for the land, and then you mm -hmm. uh, you work with architect, land developer, and then kind of prepare a concept, get it entitled by right. the county and the city. Right, and that's where you really add a lot of value because people can see what you can build and see the true value of that land. Right? Exactly. Okay. Um, I think, you know, you, you don't want to go always through entitlements. I think it needs to be worth it. Uh, you really need to understand the local zoning, mm -hmm. uh, really talk to the county, talk to the land planner that has been there for the last five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure you work with someone that uh, did in entitlements, obviously. We're just here to make sure we maximize it. We understand what does the community needs at the moment, f you know, for that specific parcel. Uh, most of it, again, we're just going to do a simple split where, you know, you get two acre, you might do four parcel. The access mm -hmm. is great. There's no wetland. There's no flood zone. Elevation's good. Um, so we understand pretty quickly whether or not it's going to work. Yeah. And that's something that we work a lot with our acquisition managers, making sure they become very well versed 
into just looking at a map and be like, wow, this is what I would do and, and mm -hmm. why. Yeah. And so I think that's the beauty with land. You can be very creative. Um, you know, I never thought my first parcel would sell for 130, but me neither, <laughs> you know, yeah, really. just by being creative, yeah, yeah. um, typically you'll look at builders, they can pay up to 20% of, of the finished house. Mm -hmm. Obviously you need to make sure the lot is ready with utilities and, and great access. Um, but yeah, I think you want to market, right? You want to understand how to talk to sellers that are not doing anything with that land and mm -hmm. you want to put it at the right price on the contract. So you're, and so you're actually closing on the property and then you try to maximize its value in whatever way. Sometimes it could just be flipping the raw land. Sometimes it's entitlements. Yeah. Have you ever then actually gone and done the development? Have you got into that aspect or are you not touching that piece of it? So again, the, today the, the, the company is, is, is built in three different, um, business model the first one is flipping the land and titling the land it's real land choir we've got house choir which is a typical wholesaling business for sfrs okay. um i think the wholesaling model nationwide uh works very well uh we're doing a couple of innovations i know that's yeah, yeah. a very trendy word uh mm -hmm. so we're, we're doing a lot of that and then the third uh aspect of the company that um me and my partner built over the last 90 days very recent uh, is to actually put manufactured home on the land that Lankwire acquires. Oh, really? Um, you know, I think manufactured home are kind of the new affordable housing. Yeah. Um, and we try to make sure that we understand the land side and now we're trying to understand the manufactured side. Mm -hmm. But again, when you do manufactured investing, manufactured turnkey investing, mm -hmm. You make sure you clean it up. You make sure you uh, have enough space to put the manufacturer. You put the utilities, whether it's uh, sewer, well, septic, water, electricity. For the most part, it's already in place uh, in those communities. Yeah. Um, and then we work with manufacturers that, you know, come in and just install and, and hook up the manufactured home. And the the why we wanted to do it is just because you just have a clear exit. You just if you just sell land, you mm -hmm. know, you can do yeah. a lot of different things, but if you're able to actually take the process a little further yeah. and install manufacturer home or modular homes, yeah. um, I me think that, it can to be- To me, that makes it messier. <laughs> it makes it messier. Because now uh, you have to figure out how to get the utilities, all of that, mm -hmm. you have to work with the city, then you have to put some foundation for the-, the the but I think he's doing a lot pen. of that shit with the raw land anyway. No, but the, the other, but no, the raw land. I think all you're doing is the subdivision. You do a nice drawing with an architect, and then say, hey, yeah, you can yeah. build this house. This is end of story. But yeah. you're not. You're for the raw land. You're not putting in utilities or like. For the most part, no. Uh, we would only do it at the moment for parcel that would work for a manufactured home. Okay. So again, we we understand how to put utilities because we're. We're doing it not not for 100% of the, yeah, yeah. the portfolio, mm -hmm. but yeah. for 20% of the parcels, it makes sense to actually put part, you know, utilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's just a third part of the business. It's just a subsidiary yeah, yeah. that we try to verticalize in mm -hmm. the yeah. business model. Or if you have raw land sitting there for months and you're like, shit, what do we do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's put it because we like in Memphis, we used to buy these houses for like hundred thousand bucks. Now they're worth like one fifty. And there was lots for sale, like right next door for like $5,000. Yeah. Like, so you can build. Yeah. yeah. Well, except it didn't make sense. It didn't make any sense. Like these houses. <laughs> ah, because, yeah, the ARV is way ARV too low. ARV is way yeah. too low. Yeah. So like your cost to build it was 150 and the ARV was 150. It's like, and it's yeah. going to take a year. Yeah. It was like, okay, well, yeah. this well, doesn't make much sense. The, 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 the manufacturer, I call it M choir, manufacturer and modular choir. Uh, choir come from the word acquire. So mm -hmm. we kind of apply that model across the all the subsidiaries but for the manufacturer you really gonna you want to look at how much this manufacturer finished and done will sell for yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. right now we're making sure we're staying the 250 300 range mm -hmm. uh florida georgia colorado those are the three states that we're working on right now and we're buying the line between 15 to 20 grand right we're putting another 30 to put utilities in so you had 50, mm -hmm. then a 1400 square feet manufactured brand new will cost you 70,000, right? Yep. 70 plus 50, 120. Mm -hmm. You've got closing costs, you've got uh, all those those fees associated to it. But I'm around 140, 150 done. 
mm-hmm. construction costs, land, everything. And you can sell for 250 and, and above yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, based on comps. Obviously, you want to look at your comps before you start you know, acquiring the land. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But if you can make 100,000 per manufactured home mm-hmm. and split it with your investor or whoever you, you, yeah, yeah. you partner with, yeah. I think it, it's a scalable model. Um, and you want to make sure you have a great GC on ground. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so and that the modular home though takes a lot way a lot of that risk. Yeah, because the modular home it's come be, built. It, it come, yeah, yeah, it comes yeah. built. It yeah, comes and built. it takes like one day for a local person, or sometimes they even do it. Like they yeah. offer it as a service. Oh, they do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do it, and they come and set it up. I heard it was like one day to like they come ship the house for the modular. Thing. Yeah, for the uh, modular. Yeah, modular. But if it's manufactured, they just. Come, it's like a mobile home. Yeah, yeah. mobile home. Yeah, uh, yeah, and they 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 just put the skirting around the stairs, and then they they shift the title, as if it's an SFR. Mm-hmm. So once it's attached, you can finance it through a conventional yeah. or FHA. As opposed to mobile home, you won't. You, you wouldn't. Don't, you don't have. You uh, couldn't. Yeah. The ability to. So do that it. was my yeah. question. My follow up question too. Like mm-hmm. when you have these modular mm-hmm. mobile homes, is there something you do? Which maybe you just said. Is there something you do to make it? show up as a single family home just as if because you don't want to have comps of you know houses built in 1950 no, yeah, no, yeah, that yeah. like sell for 250 then they're like well yours is just a piece of shit modular home for <laughs> you know that's worth 100k yeah. have you had have you well i guess have you done any of these projects have you had that issue yet of the appraisal well we're looking only at manufacturer on our comps i'm not going to compare oh SFR. okay yeah, okay yeah, yeah, you yeah. are yeah, oh yeah. wow but i'm just saying where if a brand new SFR will be for 350, 375 in Florida, <coughs> I want to make sure I come very competitive at 250, 275 with my manufacturer mm-hmm. because now you've got interest rate coming up. Oh, yeah. Those guys that could afford a 350 home, now yeah. it's getting tight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's right. they got to go down in, in what they want. They still want brand new. They still want you know mm-hmm. brand new carpet, brand new flooring, brand new bedrooms. What can they afford? Yeah. Well, yeah, I yeah. guess manufactured is or modular would be the way for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Interesting. So it's just a way of kind of making sure we can use what we acquired over the last 24 months for land yeah. and, and maximize it. It's always maximizing the value that you acquire yeah. for your investors. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Are you always acquiring the land or do you also uh, do like lease option or something like that? For the most part, we acquire it. You acquire we, it okay. we always put in the contract with the intention of closing on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in 18 months, we wholesaled the land once. Okay. Um, it, I don't think you can wholesale land the way you wholesale houses. Yeah. But it's I was thinking the lease option, at least you can actually, you pay them a certain amount of money every month until you kind of like do your thing. Whatever on seller that. financing, you mean, or? Uh, on the lease option, you basically rent the land. Rent the land, okay. So, and you, can, um, you have a lease with an option to, to purchase yeah. at the end so that you... We haven't done it, mm-hmm. but uh, I know people do it. Yeah, yeah. I know, you know, I just want to make sure I have the right to buy it at some mm-hmm. point. But it depends. I think they're they're doing that a, a lot, I think, on more on the commercial side. Commercial side, yeah. So they yeah. can kind of lock in the piece of land and then they find a tenant that's going to be triple net. Yeah. If and they're going to, you know, okay, well, you know, McDonald's wants to be in that corner. Okay, well... That's I'll it. sell and it to you, yeah. yeah. I think it's an interesting model. Uh, I think with land and it's just in, 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 in real estate in general, you can be very creative. So mm-hmm. you can do wholesale, <laughs> innovation, seller financing, triple yeah. net. Yeah. Um, I think you want to get in front of sellers. Yeah. Because a, a lot of people getting started in real estate, they've got all those ideas and they plan for so much, mm-hmm. but they're just not getting leads. Yeah. So... I think that the first thing I wanted to focus on when I started was, okay, how can I get consistent lead on a daily basis? Right now we're talking to between 100 to 200 sellers on a weekly basis. And so we know 99% of them won't sell the price we we want to. Mm -hmm. Um, But if we just get 1%. Yeah, and land is kind of a, it's a particular thing. I mean, if you kind of, if you own a piece of land for, you know, five, 10 years, you know, at the beginning when you bought it, so oh, I want to build this house, or I want to do something, and then you're paying taxes on it every year, and you say, okay, well, why would I? It's been ten years now. I haven't built anything on it. Why don't I stop sell it? You know, do, do something with it. So yeah, especially so now, then they're like, should it be nice to have an extra cash right now mm-hmm. with everything going on? Or yeah. how the hell? Why would I build land right now when yeah, money's tight, financing's yeah. expensive. Well, think about it. If 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 you've got a storm coming, like the one that, that came two weeks ago, and literally like your house go down or your daughter house get 
you know, underwater mm -hmm. and you need cash. Like, what are you going to sell first? You're going to sell your stocks, you're going to sell your house, or you're going to sell your land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Typically, they'll be like, I have, I don't even use that parcel that I, yeah. that my dad gave me or that yeah, yeah. I acquired a long time ago. Yeah, yeah that's true. So, so there's less of an emotional attachment, exactly. right? So you say, okay, well, this is like, yeah, I can I can buy another piece of land. It's not as yeah. critical. Yeah. Think. And then our role is to come in, making sure that our investor get a piece of the action while we do the work. Mm -hmm. We just do turnkey investment. I think you're doing turnkey investment. You understand, yeah. you know, what people are looking for when they do turnkey investment. You want to make sure it's hands off. They're not here to invest and, and to manage the daily, yeah. you know, operations. That's our job. Yeah. Obviously, it's a little bit more expensive for investor because everything's taken care of. But I think we're, you know, compared to a lot of competitors, we were able, able to provide like, I think, an 18% IR for the, the last 18 months on a yearly mm -hmm. basis. So nice. I think we're very competitive. Obviously, we're not at the scale, uh, you know, compared to Acre Trader or, or like other competitors. Mm -hmm. But we aim to be. I think um, we just finished our pre seed. We want to get some institutional on board uh, next year. Uh, we're already in the talk with a lot of them to, you know, help us to develop the the brand and the scale of where we want to be. And, you know, we want to keep working until then. Mm -hmm. awesome. And then when people come to invest on your website, can they like see all the different deals you have? And then do they get a piece of the deal? Like, is it a $100,000 investment for 10% ownership or are they lending money? How is the kind of a work? So, Right now, it's only been equity based. So I'll take a parcel. You know, let's say I put it on the contract for twenty. Uh, I see it's worth sixty. You know, just because we can market it properly, we can clear up the land, and we can uh, we have buyers on ground. We understand what the builder is looking for. So I'll put it on the contract for twenty. <coughs> it might cost me ten grand to get that deal done. So thirty, and then. Our company generates some fees on the front end, so maybe I'll fund it for 35, right? It'll go on the marketplace for 35. The investor knows that it's an S, uh, you know, it's a, it's a new entity. They invest in that entity, right? 35, mm -hmm. and we just split the profit on the back end. So mm -hmm. when it sells for 60, minus closing costs and realtor fees, let's say it's 50, 50 minus 35, there's uh, roughly 25 to split mm -hmm. in half. Okay. So is that like an LLC or a land trust if you have? It's or? we do entities, different LLCs every okay. time. Okay. Uh, okay. We thought about doing land trust. I think it's a good idea as well. Okay. But right now we're just doing you know one entity per investor. Mm -hmm. um, per investment. Per investment. Okay. Now, that's our joint mm -hmm. ventures mm -hmm. uh, where we directly partner with someone. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do portfolios. Mm -hmm. where now it's a little bit more complicated because you get, you know, to you need to file some regulation with the SEC because you're getting 20, 30, 40 investors into one vehicle. Yeah. So we've done that for portfolios where, you know, we bring more diversification. There is 20 to 25 parcel. Oh, interesting. Uh, and at least they get a piece of each yeah. of the deal. That's risky. Yeah. More, uh, it dep some of them prefer, you know, to be in a one-to-one one parcel mm -hmm. with us. Yeah. Some of them prefer to invest in a in a mix, yeah, you know. Yeah. Kind of like roulette. Roulette. You pick the number or you pick the color. Or oh, you pick <laughs> the <exactly>. row. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more secure. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so um, you, uh, do you have different strategies? So in Phil, you have the commercial. You must have some kind of like different strategy, like if it's rural. Yeah. Right. So like what what do you do in rural? I mean, I think it's, uh, it's a, little bit, a little bit different, I would say. So, well, the, everything starts by market research and pricing um when you send your mailer most people in real estate just send mailer hey i'm interested in buying your asset mm -hmm. great we just do it a little differently where we actually send an offer right from the bat be like right. first page here's who we are is how, how we're going to work together and second page is the terms of the loi and so that yeah, offer, you don't, have, you don't have to do like uh, inspection or anything like that. Not really, because we. What's the due diligence? It's like it's a piece of land. I know. <sighs> I mean, I th there's a lot of that, things right? that can go wrong. Uh, yeah, that's right. But it, I mean, you, a lot of that's that, like whether it's a flood zone, whether it's uh, be done before. All of yeah. that can be done before, right? So most of it, yeah. yeah. So th there's, I think, fifty percent of the due diligence done before we send the mailer. Mm -hmm. We check the flood zone, mm -hmm. wetland access, whether the 
whether owners are alive, because that's a big part of it. You don't want to go through probate and all those complicated yeah, processes. That's not fun. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you kind of get those indicators up front. You make sure you get in, you know, counties where the land is moving. I think there's 3,400 counties in the U.S. So we kind of take the data from Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, export it, make sure we understand where the land is moving, how many parcels are for sale compared to how many sold in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. There's just a ratio here mm -hmm. that you want to make sure you go in the highest ratio. Um, and then you want to make sure that price per acre is not $500. We want to make sure we're going to sell the land for at least 30 to 40 grand. Mm -hmm. We don't want to go in the middle of um, no yeah. Bernardino County, for example, where you buy land for 500 bucks an acre. That's yeah. just a lot of time and a yeah. lot of efforts to find that you can only sell it on seller financing for 20 bucks a month for the next 10 years. <laughs> that, oh, that's yeah, just, yeah. I know a lot of people do that for cash flow, but I just rather go into not the biggest deal because you, you find your, you know, you find yourself in front of institutional people that have millions of dollars to invest in due diligence. We're more in the buy for 20, sell for 60, buy for 30, sell for 80 mm. kind of thing. Okay. Um, in fields. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's the typical return that an investor could expect on uh, on one of those land deals? I mean, on, on joint ventures, one-to-one -one parcel, uh, we've been averaging between 14 to 18% per investment. Mm -hmm. uh, it can take three, six, nine, 12 months. Uh, land is less liquid than houses, mm -hmm. but the appreciation is still there. Mm. So even though you're not selling in the first six months, you're safe. Your land is appreciating over time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think the average appreciation on land was 8% for the last 30 years. Really? Compounded. So wow. um, you're not getting cash flow, yeah. you're not getting rents, mm -hmm. but uh, the day you sell, you get a big chunk back plus profits and mm -hmm. you can write, you can reinvest it right back into another uh, joint venture. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're not the next crypto, but I think we're 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 very good at securing investments. Uh, you know, capital coming in, mm -hmm. and you know, our job is just to market the land right, making sure the realtors on ground are doing the work, uh, because you guys know as well as I do that finding a good realtor to sell your land is not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, not every realtor will work hard for a fifty thousand dollar parcel. Yeah, yeah. So we gotta. We gotta kind of give him as much as we can on the front end, pictures, videos, the zoning uh, documents, uh, making sure they understand what title we wanna work with. And their job is just to pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. Just pick up the phone and just make yeah. sure you can walk the property with them if they need to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Have, you ever done, have you ever tried to do anything unique like uh, buying some raw land? At it's something I always thought about. It was like buying land kind of like, not in the middle of nowhere, but rural, rural land and putting some unique things on it for like Airbnb, like putting like yurts yeah. or oh, something yeah, yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, a tent and... Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So have you guys ever like... I've thought about, thought about it. About uh, it? I thought about it. It's just now you're getting... I don't think you're a, into a virtual business. You are... You're on ground. You, yeah. you, need, you need someone to operate it. Yeah, um, that's true. And I think we're not big enough yet, but... I'm never gonna say no because I'm I'm <laughs> always open to your business <laughs> ideas. Yeah. <laughs> that was something that was yeah. thought about before. What about the uh, path of progress? Are you kind of like looking into that? Kind of like looking at where in the city, like where the development is happening, and kind of like trying to play chess and then uh, yeah, kind of like get ahead <laughs> of the game and say, okay, we better buy this land as much land as we can before even overpay it because yeah. we're gonna be there. Yeah, true. I think most of what we do is in path of development. I okay. mean, it's we're never buying downtown New York. We're never buying downtown LA. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not, it's just not who we are because there's already too many people looking for it. Yeah. Um, I think we want to step back a little bit, maybe 10, 15, 20 miles away from you know, MSAs that are between 200 to 250. We're not going in the biggest city. You know, yeah. we're more in. Ch Chattanooga, we're in, uh, you know, Memphis, I'd love to, we acquired a couple parcel around it. Mm. Yeah. Cleveland, we've done a, a couple in uh, Yuma, Arizona, we've done Colorado. I mean, we bought in 32 states, but it's never downtown. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's always it's around. It's always a suburb. Right. Okay. Interesting. Any tax uh, tax purchases, tax lien purchases? I started by doing tax liens and, and tax uh, deeds. That's mm -hmm. how I started my career. Um, I don't know if I would recommend it if you want to scale, just because, well, tax lien, for the most part, you got to wait a year mm -hmm. uh, before you can acquire the deed. For most states, not every state. Yeah. Some of them are two years, three yeah, years. Depend, I think yeah. some of them is like, uh, yeah, I forget yeah. which one. And Florida is some of them is the judicial and some of the other ones you, you don't go it's non-judicial yeah so process is a little bit easier yeah. i mean you can you can definitely do great deals uh -huh. um the last auction i did i bought like five parcel for 20 grand waited a year um then i got the deed because the the seller the owner at the time never paid his taxes so i kind of got the parcels they were all they were every single parcel were in an HOA. Mm -hmm. And I think I sold them all for like 50. Uh, but I still had to wait a year. So the velocity of money, it's mm. it's slower. I think you yeah. can get those deals just by sending mailers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. But it's not a bad idea because there's some counties that have great auctions. Yeah. yeah. Any issues buying a, a piece of land that's in an HOA? Well, you just get a budget for it, yeah. um, making sure. Is there more cost? Because then you not only have to deal with the city permitting and all of that, but now you also have to get some approval from the HOA. HOA. I know we, we d we're doing something in what is that called Myrtle Beach? Yeah, remember that thing where we lost? I lost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, every HOA and is different. It was different. like it was in an HOA, and then they couldn't get these stupid drawings approved by the uh, HOA. Yeah, I, I think you want to read the HOA. Uh, before you close on it yeah. extensively because I, I have a deal right now where I'm, I'm about to purchase it and we just found out like three days before closing that the HOA has the right to purchase before you do. So it's it's very rare, uh, but it happens in some some oh. cases. Most HOAs will, will not get the first pick, but, mm. you know, it's a little bit more scary when you first get started in, in, yeah. in yeah, real estate. Really. And yeah, what happened to capitalism? <laughs> first come first serve yeah, first come first serve <laughs> i'm on it <laughs> are you guys just doing uh mailers still are you doing texting and cold calling that's i think the million dollar question whether you should do mailers sms uh bandit sign you yeah. know how do you market to landowners yeah i think my current conclusion is how old are those landowners what's the demographic yeah and it's it's a total different ball game compared to wholesaling SFRs or or doing the rental arbitrage. Mm. Yeah. Those guys are 60, 65. The best deal we've done are coming from people that don't even have an email. Yeah. So it's like Or they still on AOL or something. They're on fax, they're <laughs> AOL, they they need a notary coming yeah. to their house. Wow. Um think a year ago, I bought three parcels in Oregon, in fields, no HOA, uh, half an acre each. Um, we needed on-ground septic because the, the the perk, it didn't perk to go underground. And I was like, I still like it. Mm -hmm. um, so we bought it for 50 and the appraisal came back at 200. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, like, well, not my appraisal, my BPO, like the, the, the realtor was like, I, I can get 200 for that. And then I called back the seller and I'm like, we were talking about the first parcel, but I saw that they had two others. So I was like, would you sell me the all three? And I was like, he was like, sure. I was like, okay, I'll send you the documents. What's your email? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, can you just fax it to me? And me like 24 year old, I was like, how do I even fax? Like I had yeah. no idea. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. it was like a big culture shock. And then I was like, going on youtube how to, how to fax contract how to buy <laughs> how to buy a pigeon <laughs> <laughs> how to buy a pigeon yeah like send the pigeon Home and so pigeon. that was one of like the, yeah. the best multiple we've done because the guy you know never went on zero wow. and that's why the you know he was in california he just you know doesn't yeah. need the land wow and then is there is there some so like typically with when we do like single family homes right we buy a house for 50k or not anymore 50k we buy a house for 80k Right? Yeah. You renovate it for 20K um, to sell it for 120, right? So to make $20,000 in profit. But if I took that same house for 80K 
turned around, sell, listed it for a hundred k the next day, it yeah. would never appraise, right? Like, oh, yeah. it would never appraise because they were like, "You bought this yesterday. Here's the photos. Here's the listing. You're trying to sell it for a hundred. We're not giving. I can find a buyer that's ready to go. Hundred k, you know, financing all that good stuff, right? But the, but appraisal. the appraisal will never happen. Is it the same thing with? Because I mean, that story is like, is it the same thing with land? Like, well, most buyers do not finance land. You can't. You, I don't think you can. You you can, can get like fifty percent uh, LTV, like right? It, it, you really have to work with local lenders. Um, yeah. I know the last parcel we sold, where the guy needed financing, was a fifty acre in Arkansas. But if it was seventy five thousand, the the buyer comes in, he's like, "I'll pay one seventy five. I'm like, "Great, a hundred thousand." And then I'm like going in through DD, blah blah, and then appraisal because they try to finance it, came back at like one forty five. So now we sold it for 145 because yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. what can I do? Okay, but most of your buyers are just buying it. Cash. Okay. Oh yeah, builders God. and... I thought traditional banks didn't even do like land, land no, loan. No, no. You're going to oh, need... So you have to go to a special kind of... Uh, it's a special a lender. Special oh. guy. They like do fit... They just like land loans okay. that they give you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like local guys, yeah, yeah. local yeah. lenders. Yeah. And it's like kind 50% of, kind of hard money lender, kind of like private yeah. lender. Yeah. Kind of. yeah. I mean, it, again... I think you can be creative on how to purchase land. Yeah. But it's definitely not as easy as FHA, conventional, yeah, hard yeah. money lending. It's harder because it's not cash flowing. So yeah. <laughs> they don't like it. We tried to do some things in the uh, L.A. area. Remember, like we were trying to buy land and then ready to issue. Yeah, we were ready, ready to issue shovel-ready permits, yeah. like ready to issue. Those are amazing. I mean, yeah. well, not really, but... It was it was pretty cool with these people just in LA. They had this whole system. They'd buy these lots of land infill or like major like yeah. a building you had to kind of like tear down and restart. But they had everything ready to issue permits, ready to go, and they'd buy it for a million bucks, spend four hundred k, getting everything ready, just the documents, and then be like, here you go, and entitled like, it for higher density. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and it was like here's three. It's three million dollars now. It's like you could literally just see how much they mm -hmm. they paid like. <clears throat> A million bucks for it two years ago. They've been going through shovel ready permits, permitting for the last two years. Now it's finally done, and they're like, "Here, here's the package. We don't want to do the project, nope. Mm -hmm. But here's the package. <laughs> and let's we'll make our million bucks and walk but that, away." But that's exactly what we do. Yeah, I think yeah. improving the value on paper mm -hmm. is the best thing you can do remotely because yeah. yeah. you're not going to be on ground putting roads and utilities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think our, our last subdivision, we bought like the, this like. Uh, I think it's 10 acre in um, Texarkana, Texas, right? 10 acre in the middle of like a bunch of subdivisions. And this 10 acre was there. So we bought it for 35. Um, we just finished the entitlement. We put 50 into it and we got approved for 34 lots, right? <sighs> and so houses over there are in the 250 range, brand new. So if you look at it, the, the, the builder will pay 20%, mm -hmm. right? 50 grand. Since we have no utilities in, they'll might, we'll sell it on the wholesale price at 25 a pop. Mm -hmm. So 25 times 34, yeah. you're doing a great multiple by just yeah. hiring a land planner on the ground to do the work for you. Yeah. Wow. Um, and you know, it's a year process, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one year process. Yeah. And I, was, I read an article, I think a couple of days ago, where home builders in the US were just like selling their houses as quick as they can because they're worried about interest oh, yeah, rates yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Are you seeing any kind of is that changing kind of like what you're trying to do with these? Because I think like the subdivisions too, if you start keep on like subdividing those, like I think the the buyers offers are going to continue to go down or maybe they'll hold off. Are you I mean, seeing we, anything? We've, s we've seen a slowdown um, because at the end of the day, when interest rate go higher, the whole chain gets yeah. hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The banks, the builder, the end buyer, mm. and yeah. the landowner. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. we had to, you know, kind of maybe we'll do, I think we did like a 7% price cut on across the board. We have, I think we have $12, $12 million on the market right now, uh, ready, you know, ready to be acquired, whether mm -hmm. it's subdivided or just, you yeah. know, the land to be yeah. built on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Hope, hopefully the Fed uh, calms down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but with the last uh, CPI report, I don't think it's gonna. So did gonna it come out it. last week? Yeah, it was like eight. Still, it was still eight. Yeah, it was like that's yeah. what interest rates are. But know? I mean, we we just went through the the highest appreciation market in history. So yeah. 
you know, in the meantime, we're it's good to be there. It's good yeah. to actually be part keep of that. Going, keep going, keep <laughs> going. <laughs> higher, higher, higher. Real estate doesn't crash. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few more months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it will be as bad as, you know, the last crash. No. But I think it's going to, yeah. I don't think so either. I think, but the, the debt is good. It's very strange. I mean, like, I'm, we're getting like mixed signals. I mean, unemployment is extremely low. Uh, you know, inflation is high, super high. And then they're trying to jack up the interest rate, and yeah. then it's it affects some market, not all markets. And they want to yeah. do quantitative tightening, and that ob obviously affect like some again so some markets, some that markets affect the yeah. stock market also. But it's just like very mixed signal. So I think yeah. it's just like, and I think I was uh, listening to uh, an economist, and he was saying that a lot of these a lot of Powell and all of that, they believe in the uh, Phillips curve, which is basically a relationship between inflation and unemployment. And then they basically are trying, when they try to increase the uh, the, in the inflation and the interest rate, then it actually gonna, they wanna create some level of unemployment to kind of bring everything yeah. back in line. So unemployment is not bad. So they're trying to <laughs> get, They w I think Powell is waiting there. to get more unemployment i think it's i think we're very close that's though. the thing and this is the thing that's kind of like a mixed signal like it's why weird, we have yeah. such a low unemployment we had full employment and then we uh yeah. then we have yeah. all this crazy stuff going on we have people with jobs that are going to be struggling to uh to live <laughs> to in, live in this country because the inflation is going this way everything is costing more yeah i mean a lot of people i mean we live in miami and you know as well as i do that a lot of people now had to move out Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's just the rents. I think my rent increased by 50% in two years. Oh, wow. And I mean, yeah, it was like we're paying me and my girlfriend three grand, like 1500 bucks each, you know, yeah. typical apartment in Miami mm -hmm. where we get you we got amenities and, yeah, yeah. and we're good. And then you finish your lease and they're like, uh, 4,500. Wow. Take it or leave it. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> So wow! Yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. I don't well, know. I think the unemployment's coming though. I think I think, I think we just haven't seen it yet. But I, yeah. I mean, I'm starting to hear like people are applying for our houses to move in, and they're like, you know, they just lost their job, or they just got a new job, or they're trying to get a new job, or, and this is in like the Midwest yeah. cities too. Like this is not even in the big metro, metro. area. So. I don't know. It's gonna yeah. be very interesting. Yeah. And then you have rents flying through the roof. Yeah. And there's still no inventory of mm. houses. Then yeah, yeah, nationwide yeah. LTV is 50%. There's like so many weird things where yeah. it just feels like we're at a stalemate right now. And yeah. you've got all those hedge funds buying all the SFRs. So yeah. mm. I think we want to keep working on the real estate side. Um, mm. I wish there was more builders, you know, because there's, yeah. there's definitely, we need more houses. That's for sure. You know? Yeah, but yeah. But then the cost of material is high. It's cost high, of yeah. labor is high, and um, yeah. Well, a lot of them went bankrupt in in yeah. '09, so it's tough. But yeah. a lot of them might f have the similar fate this time because they they build the house at for this price and they put the material and labor at this cost. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they're gonna have to sell at this price. It's yeah. Gonna be and most of them can't rent it out and make much money. Yeah, I mean these houses that you can't rent. Them, so yeah. Yeah. We'll see, but yeah. you know, as long as you keep working and getting deals, I think the the name of the game in real estate again is get in front of sellers, mm. yeah. yeah, because you never know when your next big deal will come. Mm -hmm. um, I think our our response rate on our mailers is like point one percent. Oh well, yeah, but who uh, cares? Yeah, it is. It is pretty low. We had it's low when we did mailers too. It was like yeah, it's low. The only time people responded was to tell me to stop sending mail. <laughs> that's <true. laughs> so that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't. I think I had one seller that really wanted to take it to the next level. Where he was like, "Don't send me ever again in the mail." Mm. And I was like, "It's public record." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of states you got to be careful on. Uh, I think South Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, Iowa, Wyoming. Uh, where the the state will actually protect um, the seller a little bit more, uh, yeah. but you know what can they sue you for? Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, he sent me a mailer with an offer that was yeah. half the price of my what my land is worth. Yeah, but and you're yeah. sending it by mail, so this is legal. It's it's a, it's a letter you send to that person individually. Right. Yeah, 
So, I mean, yeah. to, they're just not happy with the price sometimes. Well, yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's perfectly legal. There's nothing wrong yeah. with any of that. Yeah. The, I mean, I would, if I was to s stop something, is those generic flyers that are kind of, uh, yeah, I think you, know, you want to customize in my mailbox. Yeah. It's like that I'd like to get rid of. <laughs> you but it doesn't hurt anyone. So, yeah, that's yeah, okay. Really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another kind of strategy that uh, I saw was uh, some people that were kind of like playing chess also. They were looking at, uh, they were really building in the middle of nowhere in California. And they were looking at when, where people would uh, build like uh, electric power line okay. or they were building solar farms or they were built. So they were kind of like all like really looking at kind of like w the next move for these big co companies. Big companies. And then they would buy like, land pieces of land strategically to say well if they want to build here they're going to have to buy my piece of land and yeah. then I, that's where i'm going to get them yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, have you done any kind of thing like that i mean they had like satellite image thing that they were analyzing yeah. to figure out like oh, you see oh you see this power line and this is coming this way and blah 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 yeah it's, yeah it's kind of crazy. i think i think that's a very targeted approach mm -hmm. Um, a little different than who we are because we're more of a, hey, uh, this county has, okay, 200,000 people. There is, I don't know, like 20,000 parcels and available. You know, there's mm -hmm. no structure on it. We just send an offer to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I just make sure there's an access. And then, I mean, even if it's right next to the highway, you can get deals done because people will just put, you know, uh, banners to advertise so yeah. th there's always i feel like oh, yeah, a, a, an exit for land yeah, yeah, yeah as long as you're creative and you market it the right way mm -hmm. um people some, sometimes people don't even buy the land to build i mean i yeah. i get a parcel where it was one of the first parcel i bought in indiana right i at the time i didn't even know how to look for flood zone and and wetland and after buying it i think for 10 grand i figured it was completely under a wetland map oh wow and so I was like, what am I going to do with it? Am I going to just give it away to, uh, you know, for taxation, you know, tax. <laughs> yeah. And and no, th there's someone that came and was like, I want to put horses on it. Wow. And he bought it for 20. Wow. And I was like, since then, I was like, you know, as long as you buy rights. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, there's guys that put horses. There's people that would put banners on it. There's, there's even people for in just industrial lot. Uh, they call them drop lots. So it's like those GCs that they just oh don't yeah, have enough yeah, space right. to like mm. put oh the yeah, materials. Yeah. So they'll just put it on the land. They'll just clear it up a little bit. Yeah. And they don't need, you know, building on top. They just leave the material. Yeah. Well, and so those fan, lots are real. quick fence around it. Quick like fence. Um, mm. Some people drop a mobile home on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or like a shed. You can get a like shed. the cheap yeah. sheds. You don't even need deeper. permits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some counties permits. will yeah. just let you put whatever on it. I don't know. We say that, but remember our chiropractor? The piece of land he bought, like <laughs> he yeah. was trying to build a mobile home. Oh, no, the, no, but got, the quick Home Depot shit. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> I think I have one that came into my where it was everyone in the company was like, We're not buying this. And I was mm. like, I want to buy it. It was right on the border in Mexico. Like, literally, our parcel was on the border. The, the, the wall oh, really? was touching Mexico. Wow. And so. I presented during our investment committee. We do one every Thursday. I right? know how to add value to this one. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, I know there's a lot, a lot of jokes that will come out. I recommend the basement, the deep, deep basement. <laughs> yeah. Do you go under or above? <laughs> um, and so body for 27, right? <laughs> Every realtor was like, I, I don't want to sell this. Like, <laughs> wow. And we sold it for 55 in three months. That's it. I, I swear. I thought you would have sold it for a lot more than that. I, I want a quick in and out. I don't <laughs> want an Mexican, issue with the Mexican IRS. Mexican <laughs> bought it. Um, but no, someone bought it. Okay. There was not even a road in it. It was just like a dirt road that was leading to it. Um, I think it was like, hey, we c you can check on our website. It was always like 15 acre mm -hmm. wow. on the wall. So I was like, yeah, just put uh, darts on the wall and let's just play, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Big darts. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I don't know if it's a Mexican that bought it or a US based guy. Do you know what they did with it? I don't want I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Smuggle oh drugs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. People. 
But I asked my mentor, um, I think a, a great way to get started in, in, uh, in land is uh, Land Academy. It's mm-hmm. a, a couple based in California. Um, I did a, a lot of con- you know consultant work with them to make sure I can get their knowledge. But yeah, they, they, they build courses for uh, beginners in mm-hmm. real estate. Um, and I went through the, the whole program and I think it, it really helps yeah. kind of open your mindset when it comes to land. Okay. Yeah. So, so land, academy. Heard about that before, land yeah. academy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not in the um, you're not in the education education space. yet. Yeah. Um, I'd love to. I just have to fix my accent a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> People understand me very well. Very well. Yeah. <laughs> um, so okay. So yeah. So that's a good. Uh, I kind of wanted to head into that also. Um, so if people want to get started, so Land Academy. Yeah. Do they? How much time does it need for someone to to get started? How much money does it need on your platform? But also if they want to do it on their own, they want to on their get, own. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Lots of different options, but. You know, someone that has a uh, two to three thousand dollar, obviously, invest it in yourself. I mean, there's so much to learn. I think before you send your first mailer, I think the first skill is how can I send a good piece of mailer, and how do I make sure I don't send too much or not enough? Mm-hmm. If you send five hundred mailers, it's not enough. Mm-hmm. If you send twenty thousand mailers in the first mailer, it's too much because you're going to receive hundreds of calls and you're gonna get overwhelmed. So you wanna kinda gradually um, do it, build your team at the right time. But those are things that they teach you, I think very well. Um, and you can, do, you can either do their, I think it's 20 hour course mm-hmm. online. And then if you wanna get into their mastermind, I mean, there's always the next step uh, for people that are a little bit more advanced. Mm-hmm. So I think, what worked for me as a 25 year old, you know, guy was to actually get mentors early on, making yeah. sure I don't. But they're hard to find people on the on the land space. I land think they're harder. Yeah, they're a little bit harder. Yeah, yeah there's way more people. Luckily, on. they know you now, so they can. <laughs> yeah, they I mean, can they find they you on Instagram and. Yeah, uh, they can reach out to me. Uh, <laughs> but if you go on YouTube, you put land. Yeah. I think Land Academy is definitely, I think, the top program. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another one called uh, Jack Bosch. I think it's a, a German guy that's been doing it for, I think, 30 to 40 years. I mm-hmm. didn't take his course, but I, I saw some of his videos. So great resource out there. Mm-hmm. I think you can learn anything you, you want. You can find anything on YouTube. And YouTube, yeah, really? YouTube yeah, rabbit hole. My God, yeah, really. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Last <laughs> time we were sitting at the sofa, we had, we had a question. So I, how do Lynn, my wife, had a question? Uh, it, crazy question so i go on youtube you say, what is this and it was like a 15 minute video about <laughs> explaining how, how that works. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway it was very interesting uh so yeah everything is in there definitely YouTube, so yeah. any so if you want to go alone so you learn you, you recommend definitely go land academy uh sense a few uh, mailer not too much kind of like get get a feel for uh, for the mailer maybe send like a thousand you're gonna get a couple of responses yep. and then work your way and scale scale up well i did two thousand yeah um and i think i got like four or five answers yeah so that i think you want to make sure that your first mailer you land one deal mm-hmm. right because if you don't land a deal then it's like mentally you're like oh my god i gotta redo it again i gotta yeah. get the data where do i get the data how did i do it again how yeah. did i filter my excel file yeah. Uh, so it's not that complicated, but there's a couple steps you need to yeah. go through. Um, yeah. What company you use to send the mailers, mm-hmm. right? Um, what's the price? Yeah. But count roughly fifty cents a mailer. So if you yeah. sent two thousand, if you send two thousand mailer, you're gonna spend a thousand dollar, and then if you get a deal where you can buy for ten, sell for twenty, mm-hmm. which is very usual in the land industry, um, you're you're now making you know ten grand on it. You spend a thousand, you make. You make mm-hmm. ten, yeah. So your return on ads is it's yeah. pretty high. There's not a lot yeah. of business where you get you get a ten x on your on your advertisement cost. Yeah. yeah. Now you still have to put the work into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. But there's a lot of people that I know that replace their nine to five, you know, within six months by mm-hmm. by sending a couple mailers here and there. Yeah. yeah. So it would be a good side gig, you would think, for someone that yeah. wants to get out of their oh, nine yeah. to five. And yeah. Okay. And you know, a lot of people are, okay, how can I get the money to pay the 10 grand? Well, mm-hmm. 
you can call me because we'll we'll either partner with you or we'll we'll get an assignment done. Okay. So we'll pay you two grand and we'll we'll buy for twelve, okay. right? So we can make make eight, and you're on your way to do the second mailer with the two grand. Mm -hmm. So now you double your money. Mm -hmm. um, there's also hundreds of people out there that finance that will actually partner with you on land. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not as many as obviously, you know, the house side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can always reach out to me, and uh, I can guide you the right way. We're not always the right fit because we've got our margin that we want to hit. Yeah. But private lender, yeah, friends and family, yeah. yeah, or you can help the seller to sell the land. I mean, yeah, in another way too. Like it's not as, it's not as uh, what's that, as risky, right? If you no. if you're new to real estate and then you say, oh, I'm gonna buy this property, I'm gonna renovate it, I'm gonna spend twenty five thousand dollars, <laughs> you know, and say, have you done that before? No. But if I'm if I'm gonna say I'm gonna buy a piece of land, I'm not gonna do anything. About anything it. to it, just market. <laughs> I'm just it. gonna market it and sell it. Yeah. And um, so okay, well, yeah, this is less risky. Like I know you're not gonna screw up on the construction or cutting the grass or something like that. No. So no. I think it's, uh, it's yeah, I think there's good investment. In houses, it's it's different. I mean, there's mm. way more things that can go wrong on the on the high ticket items yeah, between yeah. the the roof foundation yeah, the inspection yeah the inspection is kind of like not, yeah. not adequate you just hidden defects yeah i mean today contractors I just, bails out I, I just got a call i had uh, this house on the contract for 15 and to me it was a deal we could wholesale that for 30 and the buyers went on ground and found out that the seller like literally like um started hiding the foundation in the basement and oh. they took everything out the door they kind of covered it up mm -hmm. and found out that foundations were like no, yeah. uh, oh, foundation yeah. issue so that's yeah, another yeah. 20 grand that we didn't plan on yeah, yeah. we had one like that yeah, so right. yeah at least one sellers will hide issues way way more on houses than land land i mean i think the biggest issue is maybe easements verified that the mm. serve you know verified yeah. the survey um pipelines under the under the land you know sometimes yeah. we find about methane or oh, really, yeah. you gotta be careful on that um indian burial ground <laughs> 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 pablo escobar you know <laughs> well, yeah. um no what else can you have you know i don't want to name all the issues because yeah uh, those are like one out of a hundred, but but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but a lot of them, I mean, they're easy to, well, to I figure. Say that. They're easy to figure out, right? I mean, I call mean, the county a pipeline. Yeah, they would know that there's a pipeline. You know, yeah, right. somebody had to have a permit to put a pipeline through. Yeah, yeah. If there was like some kind of chemical plant that was removed, or yeah, you know, you know, there there are records associated with that. And, yeah, you know. but usually, if you send a mailer, that is because our mailers we're sending them between 30 to 40% of market value. Mm -hmm. So even if they make a counter, typically we kind of find a number that even if something goes wrong, we mm -hmm. can recoup our investment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, again, we're in the investing world, so there's not, it's, it's not 100% sure on everything yeah. you do. Yeah. But if you do, you know, nine deals out of 10, good, and there's no issue, you're gonna do extremely well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I agree. No. Very good. Yeah. Well, Romain, so it was a pleasure. Did you have any other questions? Yeah. So it was a pleasure yeah. sp speaking with you. Great. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Uh, Thank if you. Uh, our listeners want to get a hold of you, they found an amazing deal and they don't know what to do with it and they want to sign my way. Assign, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So how can they uh, reach out? Uh, on LinkedIn, Romain Danielou. Instagram, Romain Danielou. Mm -hmm. Facebook, Romain Danielou. Oh, wait a second. What? <laughs> <laughs> it Romain sounds like they're all the same. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> in French is Romain, but in the yeah. US they call me Romain Lettuce. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Now you without the e. Yeah, re without the e. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Romain. The I'm Romain not sure Lettuce. If we, so check in the description. I'm gonna have the uh, all the links there. So uh, yeah, sure. Romain, it was a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. Thank you, Antoine. Let's play soccer. So make yeah. sure you like and subscribe, and uh, see you next week.